So AWS IoT collects, stores, and analyzes IoT data from millions of devices used in many industries. With over 40% of the cloud market and their IoT services integrated to other Amazon cloud services, it has become a home for many enterprises building complete solutions. So I'd like to introduce uh, Cesare and Samuel from Console Red, who will demonstrate how FinEdge IO can be config configured to connect to new and legacy AWS IoT cloud services and their associated business applications. So Cesare, over to you. Okay, thank you, Phil. So yeah, uh, our contribution is to enable Infinage to connect to AWS. Uh, two words about the company that I work from, for. So it's a console thread. We are the software AG partner and contributor to the Synage project. We design and implement end-to-end -end IoT solutions with complete technical cap capability in areas of uh, hardware design and embedded software and the cloud. So here is the uh, the architecture of our presentation. So as I said, our contribution is uh, to ThinEdge extension, which allows it to connect to AWS. Okay, so <clears throat> as I mentioned, the, uh, the it's precisely it's the intention is to uh, connect to AWS IoT core MQTT broker. And yeah, the components that we are using, the first one is Collect D. Collect D is a daemon that collects system performance metrics periodically. We will use CPU load and memory usage metrics. The Collect D is already integrated with the ThinEdge. So yeah, we didn't have to do anything about, about this one. And next is ThinEdge itself, which contains local MQTT broker, which will connect to IoT core broker on the cloud side. Yeah, and the data received by the broker will be stored in IAWS time stream, uh, which is a serverless time, time series database uh, for IoT. And time stream database will serve, serve as a data source of the vis visualization of the data that we prepared with AWS Grafana Managed Service. And yeah, so let's start. Uh, Sam will show you the, the part for, for the TinEdge and the configuration of the connection. And uh, I, will sh I will show you in a minute how the data travels through the AWS services. Sam, over to you. Thank you, Shazir. Um, so as mentioned, we have been working on adding support to ThinEdge for connecting to the AWS cloud. Um, so one of the changes that we've made is to add a mapper for AWS that takes in ThinEdge JSON and validates the JSON format. We've also extended the ThinEdge CLI tool to support configuring and connecting to the AWS cloud. So I'd like to quickly just demonstrate how to connect uh, a device running ThingEdge to AWS. So i just share my screen here. Okay, hopefully you can see uh, my terminal here. Um, so the first step would be to create a device certificate and private key. Um, so we do this through ThinEdge CLI using the uh, cert create command and we pass in a device ID which is unique to the device that we're connecting to AWS. Um, so we can now, so we can view the uh, current configuration using the list command. And here we can see uh, the path to the uh, private key and to the certificate. Um, so the next step here would be to set the AWS root certificate. Um, so you can see here we have a default location for the root certificate. Um, on most Linux flavors, the AWS root certificate would already be present in this default location. Um, however, if not, it is publicly available for download and you can place it in this location or update this path if you prefer to place it somewhere else. 
Um, so next we want to set the URL of the AWS instance that we'll be connecting to. So the URL is unique to the AWS account and region that is being used. And it can be found in the AWS um, IoT core settings. So I'll quickly just show you where you would find that. Um, so in uh, AWS IoT here, we have uh, these settings down on the left-hand side. And if we head over there, uh, we have an endpoint here. So if we head back over to the console, uh, we would uh, use the TED config set to set the key here that we're setting is aws.url. Uh, let me just copy that again. Place that URL in here. Um, we'll just use the list command again to make sure that was set correctly. Yeah, so we can see here the AWS URL has been set. Um, and the next step here is to uh, upload our client certificate to AWS. So I'll just show you how that's done. Um, so on the, on the left hand side again here, we have uh, security. And if we expand that, we have certificates. And inside there, you will find uh, an option to add a certificate. And we want to register a certificate. So here, uh, we want to select the option that the CA is not registered with uh, AWS as we're using a self-signed certificate here. So we either have the option to upload a certificate signing request, or we can upload the device certificate itself. So another one of the changes that we've made in ThinEdge is when you generate the um, client certificate and private key, we also generate a certificate signing request. Um, but for the purpose of the demo, we're just going to upload the device certificate as we have encountered an issue in the um, AWS uh, web console that doesn't allow us to upload the CSR, although it works fine through the um, AWS command line tool. So we just select the certificate here. And we want to hit register. Um, so it says we successfully registered the certificate. If we just head over there, um, the next step is to attach a policy to the certificate that we've uploaded. So um, a policy is essentially a, a set of rules that are used to control access to and from the AWS instance. Um, and inside the policy, we define which topics are allowed to be used for connecting subscribing, publishing, and receiving. Um, uh, and an example policy for AWS will be included with the changes that we've made, but I'll just quickly show you what a policy looks like. Um, so here we have a policy that's already been created. Um, so you can see here, we have um, various roles for connecting, publishing, subscribing, and receiving. Um, and we define which topics we're allowed to do those actions on. Um, so when you're creating a policy, you can do it through the AWS um, rule builder. So you just select from a drop down list the, the effect, so allow or disallow the action, and then the, the um, topic that you would like to allow or disallow. Um, but there's also a, a JSON format. Um, so just for testing purposes, you can, we will we'll include a copy of this JSON and you can just copy and paste that in there to create a policy. So if we head back over to the certificate, uh, we want to attach a policy to the certificate. So we select our policy here and attach the policy. And then the next thing is we want to activate the certificate just from this drop down uh, at the top here, the actions drop down. Uh, so for this demo, we have Collect D uh, running in the background, collecting metrics on CPU and memory usage. This data is then published over a local topic in JSON format, uh, grouped using the existing Collect D mapper and forwarded onto AWS. So now we want to connect to AWS uh, using the Connect AWS command. 
So there's various checks that are going on here, um, checking the configuration. Um, it will restart the local uh, Mosquito MQTT broker with the new bridge configuration. And then it will perform a connection check to AWS. So just checking that we can uh, publish messages to and receive responses from AWS. Uh, we can see here that that is successful. Um, so I'd like to now hand you back over to Cesaria, who will show you the data received in AWS. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Okay, so yeah, uh, the AWS console, IoT Core uh, Broker console, allows us to um, to test if the if the messages are coming, so we can subscribe to all topics to see uh, if it actually works. And we we see here that, that there are incoming messages from the from the device side. So yeah, so. In order to be able to uh, store the messages, we had to create some uh, some rule. So here is the rule concerning the message routing. So you can use the CQL uh, language to extract the message, the data from the messages in JSON format, and yeah, also subscribe to the particular topic that you want to uh, get messages from. And then you define the rule action. In this case, we, we define the uh, time stream table action, which writes messages into a time stream table. You select the database name, you select the table name. You also specify at least one dimension to the data. In our case, the dimension is a device ID, which is uh, which we used for it. We use the client ID variable. So yeah, now going to the uh, to the time stream service. There is a query editor, so we can see the data that is stored with the query. So here is the query for the uh, last 100 um, rows in the database. Yeah, so here is the data. We have the, yeah, the device ID as a defined uh, dimension. We have a measurement name, and these are the memory percent usage and CPU percent uh, active, these are the timestamp of the data incoming and the values for, for, for this data. And on top of this database, we have set up the Grafana workspace, where we define the data source as a, a Amazon time stream data. And we have prepared um, a visualization in the Grafana to, to see actually how the data is coming to the to the uh, to the backend. So here we can we can choose the device ID. We can choose the, um, the time span of the of the data. We can turn uh, auto reload to five seconds, for example. We can choose the period that we are interested in. So uh, it can be a historical data or the current value. So if we choose here, we can see uh, the memory usage last value, the maximum value, and yeah, uh, the uh, average value and the number of measurements that uh, are in this time span, and the same for the for the CPU here. Yeah, so we can uh, yeah, let's see last five minutes. So these are the measurements in the last five minutes. We got a two, two, 224 measurements, and these are the values and 223 measurements for the CPU. So yeah, to sum up, sum up uh, the steps, what we presented is creation of the certificate on the uh, thin edge side, uh, setting of the URL to AWS IoT Core, setting up the AWS, so we uploaded the self-signed uh, certificate for the device, we attached the policy uh, to allow uh, subscription, publishing and connecting to the, to the topics, to the backend. We activated the certificate, connected the TinEdge site, so TinEdge um, broker to the AWS. And in the uh, AWS, we have shown that the mess messages are being collected, the rules to, of IoT Core that is uh, storing the data to the time stream database and the query the data and 
yeah, we have shown the dashboard of the live view and historical data in uh, prepared Grafana dashboard. So that's all from my side. And uh, back to you, Philip. Thank you.